Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me back here at the start of a new campaign in you know the Lasses of Europe in which we're playing as Tomsk. Now this is my third time playing as Tomsk. And if you like to read about political policies, please go right ahead. As well as the Years of Steel, the Years of Ashes. Our reading of this political last wells was in order. As well as, well technically that one came from a uh, year away from Wo Lin, so if you want to read about this one as well, please go right as well, so. But, if you'd also like to read about the end of the provisional government, please go ahead as well. But passing on the torch, there you go. Read that. Just because I've read these before, and because it's my third time playing this, this type of campaign, um, you know, it is what it is. I do want to go with the Tiran Ra, with the Petrov Salon Morning Dumo. There you go. A family as diverse as the Republic itself. Military policies, of course. Economic policies. Also, we are using TNO with the updated version, with no step back. DLC, of course. So now we have to pay attention to terrain and supply, but if you want to be read about lullabies for the Old West, please go right ahead. They drink to the future for once. The modern bogatir, changing in the guard, of course. For, for many voices, a consensus will soon emerge. First draft. And then, of course, the modern bogatir. An interesting story, if nothing else. So now we've got some PB. Ah, I love the PB. In which we can go ahead and scam some more stuff, which would be super, super great. And my goodness, do I want to raid. I want to raid. But let's see. Empire associations. Integrate them. Suspend the provisional government of the First Amendments. I like the stability and political power. The legacy of a democratic Russia is not bad, too. Um, cool. And which one do we want? Anything here? Uh, this other stuff is from... Down here. Warlord development. We can kind of do that one. We can we also do legacy of the Siberian plan. Which one would be bad? At the same time, I do want to maximize, well, which we will do, don't get me wrong. Do want to maximize, you know, of course, scavenging, looting, raiding, all that good stuff like that. Also, oh, there goes Goring. There we do this one, social policies, and we have social development, which we're doing better on poverty already, so. And on the Hall of Mirrors, very nice. Lot up with, uh, suspend the provisional government. A republic worth fighting for. Very good. Very, very good. Oh, please let us raid. Please, please, please. First one up, we want more industrial capacity. That's always good to do. 1.5%, less efficiency gain, more max production efficiency, streamlined focal production facilities. Usually a pretty good one to do. Yeah, I like construction speed too. Oh, but this one's not bad to get. Ooh, more growth. More IC and more growth. We gotta go that way, because right now, we're looking okay. We're not looking great. We're looking okay. We have a deficit, but you're always going to have a deficit when you're playing as a warlord. So, end of an era. I will fear no evil. The First Amendments. More political stability? Yes, 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 yes. Now we can open up this whole GUI thing, Dreams of a Scientist as well. A dark world grows ever brighter. Very cool. And across the lines, Dmitri, from Mikhail Nikolaevich to Kachevsky and Tchaikovsky, of course. Stressful days, and anyway, how's your brother? Ah, uh, good. No one wants to rate us yet? Well, alright, whatever. Equipment. Equipment, my friends. What up with the legacy of democratic Russia? We can use that political power. Thank you very much. I do apologize, I'm just going to blow through a lot of these just because, um, I've read them before, like I said, so. Hope you guys are having a pretty good day. What is that? Is this loot? That's a different icon for loot, which is actually really cool. Let's see. Oh, yeah. More stuff down here. Worker concessions, which we don't care about. Construction speed. Efficiency. Um, efficiency gains okay. Gives more IC anyways. Musician, the marshal. Cool. A troubled soul. Of course, we have Lufthansa Tear Bombing. And what else? No other national spirits do we have? The Flight East. Oh, look at that. Oh, from Siberian Black. Oh, that's actually not good. Hmm. Warlord of the City. Formation of the Salons, which is very nice. And look at the Siberian Plan. Not bad. Factory output actually is worse. Increases factory output. Okay. Weird. Siberian Black Army. Well, I hope we can win here. There's no guarantee ever, but I hope we can win. A lot of St. Petersburgers, like the descendants of old, will fight to the west. Nice. He's pretty good in defense, but that's a field marshal emptying the offices. Um, increase it by 1.5%. There you go. Cool. Seeing a line of the future, pursuing a feverish dream. Nice. As well. Yeah, our guys are probably going to get pretty defeated pretty easily, so. Um, they're taking way too long to get over here. 
Hmm. Yeah, that's not good. We'll try to wait till the last second, but still. Uh, that's not looking good. That's not very fair for our organization, but we'll see what happens. Come on, you guys can win, right? Come on. Winning? Oh, uh, you never know. If you win, you get political power and stability and r rifles. If you lose, well, that's not good for us. Huh. Pursuing a feverish dream, then empower the association. Also, I have heard that because of the No Step Back update that TNO is currently on, it makes wars all more difficult and more challenging. If you want to put that, please go ahead. Yay! More stability and political power. I love it. Actually, do we have a positive amount of construction speed? No, no. Not there yet, huh? Well, I guess we're still building it up, so I guess it makes sense, but still. You, Pietro Kroglov. Not bad. Probably gonna need more attack, maybe, so we'll see about that. So we'll see. Oh god, it's bad supply. Ugh. I hate bad supply, man. And then to get the salons. Not bad. Also, yeah, the other game has definitely gone even even laggier than uh before, as I can tell. So we'll see what happens. Ooh, what do we have here? No raids. Let's see. Everyone's been raided or has no loot. The passing. Oh boy. Well, please go on. You want to that? Please go ahead. And you want to the uh, permanence of the manuscript? Please go ahead as well. Cool. Associations begin their election campaigns. Media Blitz. The last solid day. Taking too far, huh? Taking too far. Right, so now it should be positive, right? There we go. Now we're a little bit more positive about things here. Alright, so now. We open a window, of course, if we want to do that one too. We lose some stability, we get more political power, which is pretty nice. The Humming of Music, which I've done. Shostakovich. Which is one's this? Decemberist? I think it plays Decemberist as well. What's this? Camaraderie? Stammering of Machinery. Hmm. Now, there's... I've done, like I said, the Decemberists. I've done the Humanists. So, I apologize if we're not going the way you guys want to. Depending on who you are. Uh, let's go this as well. Nice. But, we're going to go with the Stammering of Machinery. A lot of the Republic's population lives in cities, and a lot more citizens arrive in the great urban centers every week. The staccato noise of industry punctuates the ebb and flow of workers going to and fro, great colossuses of steel and smoke. The work of urban industrial workers is no less noble than the work that their forebears did in the countryside, after all. all hard work is eternal, and its application is limitless. The modernist and bachelor societies, alike in some aspects, yet dissimilar in others, have both made the life of urban workers the main issue of their respective campaigns, the bachelor seeing the urban masses a permanent da dagger to the heart of the Republic, and claim that a strong state is necessary to defend the Republic. The modernist seeing the new industrial classes, or class, the crucible in which the future of Russia is to be forged, and seek to form a government capable of harnessing this opportunity. Both parties urge citizens to make urban renewal the core and concern of the Republic's new government. But if you want to read about the history of the Siberian expansion, please go ahead. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. No raids against anybody else? Darn. Eh, why not? How's debt looking? Not good. Hmm. Oh well. Clamoring of the factory versus crack of the gunfire? Oh, well, doing clamoring of the factory. The vast large society is wives of the ways in which populists and demagogues can bring forth the destruction of a once broad nation state. The mass industrialization of Tomsk has accumulated powers in the cities of the Republic and surrounded the offices of state with clamoring masses, easily roused by their apathy by anti social forces. The vast large society thus favors a policy of prudent economic development, squarely aimed at keeping the citizens content and confident in the state. Having thus extended, or having thus excised, mass hysteria from politics, the Republic under the presidency of Daniel Combs and his associates from the Trinity Group will flourish into the new age of pro strength and prosperity and progress. Two propaganda posters. The railway uh, <clears throat> trams of Tomsk could always been fertile ground for political art and propaganda posters. Of late, the elections had driven the post postings into overdrive. Two parties principally look targeted the industrial, uh, or urban industrial workers, Sakharov's modernists, and Karm's bastard arms. The former's art often held beautiful futuristic designs, modern gleaming cities under the moonlight. Built by workers of the Republic, another popular design combined two posters posted together. The first depiction, 
or depicted a father kissing his family goodbye before going to his factory shift, leaving his son to the studies. A second poster depicts a Russian cosmonaut flying to the moon and a photo of his father in the spaceship's cabin. The modernists would reform the Republic and bring it to a new age of human progress and ingenuity. The Bastelot campaign, in contrast, had a stock surreal aesthetic. Simple slogans such as harder work, greater prosperity, stronger republic, framed angular figures emerging from giant ironworks. The most often used designs were of a particular martial note. One of the posters showed men of the republic battling a chimera with industrial tools such as hammers. The great beast between lion heads represented the traitor generals Pokrishkin and Andriv. The snake's tails, tails stood for the anarchists in the east, the eagle body for the mad kingdom of General Krylov and Kemerovo, and a vote for the Bastilar vote would or the vote for the Bastilar would be a vote for the destruction of the separatists. Industry will defeat the secessionists. Technology will build the future. Well, we're probably going to go with industry will defeat the secessionists. And Gnazium follows suit. Association the good vote. If you want to read about uh, the Gymnasium's follow suit, please go right ahead as well. So, I know I've read these ones before because I've done this one, and I remember I, at the time I recently, 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 slightly did this one as well. So. So that will be good. And we'll do some research, of course, get some research speed, get some of this good stuff too. Yeah, research speed would be very nice to grab. And six of research speed as well. Anything else? Increase production quotas? Yes. That was really fast, actually. That's really nice. Working concessions we don't care about. Euro military district, god dang it. Oh, which one is that one? Yeah, it's you guys over here. I hope we can get there in time. Oh boy. Oh boy. Of course, we're building some prisons as well. Clamoring the factory. Good now, as we for even more stability. Um, and if you'd like to read about the associations make the vote, please go right ahead as well. Just because we've got some other things to do with you. Very nice. I would love to rate other people. Oh, the supply system is butchering our. Oh my goodness, this is so bad. Yeah, you can't react in time. Well, we'll see. We'll try to save, but we'll see. You know, there's no guarantees. And... Please don't lose, guys. Please do the best you possibly can. 55 is not bad, but maybe we'll do okay. Maybe we will do okay. Alright, Nikolai Batyuk. How do you... Batyuk? Yes, you are. Cool. Oh, adaptable, that's always good to get. Cool. And Field Marshal, thank you. Only one loot. Not bad, and plenty of political power, too. Man, never enough construction speed. Frondizi, huh? Oh, Frondizi. Our associations, and now what? Collapse of the trim, but pretty normal, 1.5%, 86% is pretty darn bad, not gonna lie. And if you want to about the new chairman, please go ahead as well. Yay! The people will decide who should take Tomsk to the next stage. Hopefully it will be us. So far looking positive. Rooker's discontent is low. Come on people, can you not get some loot please? Fedlos has been rated too. I'd love to rate the free aviators though. Oh my goodness. Military build category. Yeah. Uh, we have to wait for the spring Rasputitsa anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And I don't want to lose any more political power, get more debt. Increase the workplace safety, I guess, but. Ooh, reorganized stuff? Okay, why not? It's only 92%, which is not good, but whatever. Deck ceiling is 130%. Inflation has spiked as well. Victory for the Bastelons. The day after the elections were a regular work day, tram lines and railway stations were crowded at the nation's people returned to work. The results of elections were on every person's lips of the main parties. The Bastelons were the least well known of the disillusion of the provisional government. The salon had its adherents, of course. Among the bankers and industrialists, whispers that the Central Siberian Republic had not been hard enough. 
uh, were right. Ideas of an iron republic, where the workers knew their place in an endless stream of weapons and consumer goods made the nation strong and prosperous. Aslan had also its adherents among the nation or the republic soldiers who felt that the army needed rebuilding the wake of the devastating war of the Agoda and mutinies. Daniel Karams had been Salon's greatest weapon, he, well loved for his humanitarian work and as a writer for books for children. The eccentric poet had run a fantastic campaign among poor workers and among the elites of the capital. Over and over he hammered his points, Tomsk needs industry. It needs rigor, it must be fanatically opposed to extremism. The separatist problems would be brought back into the nation, domestic and foreign threats had to be dealt with aggressively if Russia democ Russian democracy was to live. To the simple end, the Bastelard Society had prepared robust economic plans to stimulate civilian and military industrial and infrastructure. Civilian industry, military industry, and infrastructure. The days they all began to return home, only this time, train stations and city centers the nation over were covered in art. Songs written by workers, posters painted in the style so common of the murals found in Tom's, Creek theaters acted on by members of the Basel Art Society, most common were crude statues hammered from industrial scraps, a veritable mobile army, all oriented towards the south through the renegade provinces cowered from the resurgent Tomsk. President Carms begins his presidency with a splash. Nice. Well, wow. You look like a ghoul from Fallout, but if you're angry about Mr. Daniil Ivanovich Yuvachev, please go right ahead. But let's begin the victory for the Bastelards. The Bastelard Society is won. We of the Trinity Association have been chosen to strengthen and defend the Republic against all threats, external and external. President Harms has prepared his for speech to the nation. He is expected to reassert the Bastelard's defiance of populism and the government's devotion to progress and history in a new urban center for the 20th century in Russia. Several union leaders and political ideologues already decry our government as one made for the elite and insensible to the needs of the masses. We dismiss these concerns as irrelevant. A strong father need not care for the whimpering of his offspring, it's only about the family's fortunes and the opportunities granted to his progeny. So now we've got to make a choice. Bend to industrial unions. Slowly improve. We'll begin to improve with industrial expertise. So with agriculture. Poverty too. The new Mangazania. The Industrial Rationalization Council. With the four year plan. Heavy industrial prioritization. Support military complex. Urban infrastructural reinforcement. It's not bad. Our finest bureaucrats. It's not bad either. Or. Oh, there's mass specialization as well, which is pretty good. Got a lot of increases here. Or oh, the Trinity Group rebuffs. Hmm. Decreases worker discontent. Lessons from Fordism. Universal modernization. Universal incorporation. Form the people's vanguard or people's industrial vanguard. Uh, well, you do get quite a bit more poverty and agriculture over here as well. Three year plan. Blitz of cities. Strike the farms. Hit the road. Our finest bureaucrats it's a four-year plan. Ooh, I don't know. Band of the Industrial Unions. The Trinity Group rebuffs. Ooh, I'm not sure which way we I really want us to go. I don't give a crap about workers' discontent. So over here, so let's say, if it says slowly get it by one, industrial expertise goes by one, two, three, two, three. For an expertise, agriculture goes up to by four. And poverty gets better. Ooh, but poverty. It kind of become more decentralized. Four year plan. You can get worse agriculture, but so really, it's, agriculture goes up by three. If you choose that one too. Versus this side. So you get what? Um, I forget. Is that three or four for equipment? So it's either four or five or six. Four or five. Eh, that's a little bit, but we're going to approve. That's not too bad. Three year plan. Honestly, I'm feeling the left side more. I want to see what the left side is more capable of. So, band of the industrial unions. With foreign investment non-existent and local private investors unwilling to invest in an unstable economy, it falls upon the government to stimulate the economy through investments. Unfortunately, the only way to build any roads or factories is through the industrial unions, tycoons, and capitalists whose brutal working conditions and exploitive practices have angered many workers. Many industrial workers will not like our cooperation with them after all. Many of these workers have been injured or even killed by unsafe working conditions. Many workers should think we should actually be cracking down on these so-called unions rather than cooperating with them. However, if we want the factories to run and the construction projects to get built, we'll need to negotiate. In the end, it'll be to the benefit of everybody. The library. A well deserved rest, huh? Cool. And before we do that, is that there too? Anyone else? Anyone else have anything here? No. Oh, no. Maybe. 
I don't know. I mean, I don't want to move our guys too much because they're pretty centrally located. But the library stood in Tomsk for generations. It made it largely unscathed through the violence of the Russian Civil War and the chaos of the Soviet Union's collapse. Even the near disillusion of the Republic had left the library untouched, its walls housed the knowledge of all Russia. The caretakers of the library had done all they could with the generous help of the salons to keep its grand archives in shape. And see, indeed, the library was one of the few places in all of Russia that could maintain and preserve the manuscripts of Russia's past. Lad Vadim Petsvalv had watched over the library since his youth before the fall of the old union. Soon it would be time for him to retire and allow his successors to take over. However, before he could, he had one last contribution to make. He sat nervously in his office, practically vibrating in his seat as he awaited the news from the man he had hired. It had been almost a month since he had sent the wanderer on a mission beyond the Urals. The man was to infiltrate Prime and return with the greatest bounty of all of Russia, the original Osomir Gospel Manuscript. The test was large was held at hostage in Perma, a sign of legitimacy for the Aryan regime. As the day turned to night, Vadim began to give up hope that the manuscript would be recovered. However, before the despair could grip his heart, the door opened. The stranger rode into the room with a slight limpy notice with a duffel bag carried in his arms. Without a word, the man set the bag down on his desk and opened it up. He took the medieval text from the bag and gently placed it in front of him. Vadim was frozen in shock and excitement. He doubted the stranger's ability, and yet here he was, manuscript in hand. Vadim examined it closely, seeing for himself the damage was dropped by the Nazi neglect. It would be a long process, but the manuscript could be saved and restored. He moved to thank the man outside and slumped back down in the chair sleep. A well-deserved rest. Speaking of prison, or poison, I guess. We cannot both make everyone happy and guarantee a secure future for Central Siberia. The only way forward is to forcefully push on with industrialization so it will become strong enough to eliminate all the separatists. Some of the bastards nodded in, along in agreement, but a great many of the people in the room seemed to remain skeptical. One particularly outspoken party member raised his hand and asked before being acknowledged, Do we not risk agitating the working class too much if we focus on industrializing at all costs? As we are aware, there are worth some rumblings of a workers' revolt across central Siberia. Garms responded calmly but sternly, of course. I am familiar with that risk. My point is merely that failure to finish industrializing rapidly creates a greater risk. I'm confident that we can put down a disorganized and poorly armed rebellion of workers. Are you more confident in our ability to reconquer the rebellious warlords to ourselves if we give them even more time to arm and organize themselves? They remained silent for a moment as everyone waited for someone to speak. Well, asked Carms, it wasn't a rhetorical question. Do you think we'd have an easier time fighting the separatists in a workers' rebellion? Fluster, the salon member, responded, Oh, I suppose not. You make a good point, Mr. President. I'm glad you agree with me, then, replied the president with a soft smile. Oh, wait, someone else interjected. Shall we move forward with a four-year plan with the industrialists, or the three-year plan involving the bureaucratic, uh, the bureaucrats and the workers? I'll think on it. Plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. And I did the external investments just because our debt's getting really high. It's getting really ridiculously high. Uh, agriculture, increase construction speed of the people's apocalypse. Um, uh, yeah, I think I read this one as well. If you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. The Petrov Salon. Hmm. Although Anatoly Petrov was elated as a recent promotion to corporal, this was tempted by the victory of the Bastelards in the Republic through recent election. The experience had been almost surreal and done little to allay his earlier fears of the division of the Republic. Huddled around a small radio with his other soldiers, the several he was now ostensibly in charge of, he had been heard both the results as well as Karm's victory speech shortly after, and the effect was immediate. Some of the men were elated, but others were severely disappointed, and more than one argument had broken out. In addition, the immediately expected letter from his father arrived only two days later, expressing both his continued support in Anatoly's service and his pride in the Bastelard's victory, and the new equipment and weapons he was sure someone would soon be provided with from the factories that were as equally ra sure to rapidly expand. He also alarmingly wrote, one, wrote of the negative receptions of the electoral results among Anatoly's mother and sister. More letters would surely be coming from them as well. Before he'd come to the army, and based on the example of his family, had thought that political dispute could, even if vigorous, be sufficiently separated from the person. That was what President Pasternak had always had to remember. Since his death, however, and increasingly he was seeing the opposite, he was seeing discord and disagreement that had continued far beyond the time, location, or interaction where they initially concurred. Even from those he considered his peers the followers of Shostakovich. Everyone in the unit was saying that Karmans intended to concentrate on fully restoring the Republic, Anatoly. Only hope that the inherently unifying nature of such a mission could act to oppose the trends he had seen, which weighed so heavily on his soul. Expansion approaches. Yeah, well, I, want to get, I want to get that better. Eval evaluate agriculture question. Ensuring our food supplies of vital interest to the stability of our state, all well, listen, the Bourbons and Romanovs never took to heart until it was too late. Given how far north we are, our agriculture situation is always teetering between insufficiency and rationing. A poor crop season could mean the end of our small democracy. We should check in on our farmers and the, on their farms to ensure the health and safety. Furthermore, we should begin planning on how to increase our agricultural productivity, whether that be through more efficient machinery or some new kind of fertilizer. Nice. Pay debt, less interest for now. Nice, that's better. Dealing with the devil. Central Siberia may have been have an abundance of natural resources, but 
the excesses. Charm saw looking at the oligarch's mansion were unjustifiable. He understood the desire to live comfortably, but the sheer size of the place was jaw-dropping and could easily cause one's blood to boil. Harms could say nothing, of course, as his nation required the investments of ultra-wealthy man like Boris Korodovsky. Kodorovsky. Kodor Kodorkovsky. Standing before the grand front doors of the factory infrastructure mogul, Boris Kodorkovsky. Good morning, Mr. President, how do you do? Called the billionaire's comms approach to a palatial front steps. <clears throat> He appeared to be friendly enough, but of course a major investment opportunity like this one would have the effect on a person. I'm fine, yourself? I'm very good, very good. It's a pleasure to meet you, Harms nodded and said nothing, of course. He climbed up to the steps and gave the man a firm handshake. Kodorkovsky gestured Harms inside. The two men walked through the too many rooms account before reaching the oversized dining room where they would presumably discuss their business. How such an elegant and massive table and set of chairs was brought to the middle of Siberia was a mystery, mystery to Carms. Both men pulled up the chairs across from each other and took a seat. So what do you have to offer for me today? asked a very eager Kodorkovsky. A little humiliating, that is necessary. It's alright, whatever. Go and do that one too. Also, I do want to raid. Can we actually raid a camera rebel successfully? Oh no, they're, they're pretty well dug in. I don't know if our soldiers going to be... Wow, that's really weird to look at like this. Oh, I forgot to make soldiers too. My bad. Like normal. Huh. There you go. You guys aren't actually that bad. You're 10 combo with, which is okay. Um, I think we want to go like 27 combo with eventually, so... Actually, before we do that, let's duplicate you guys. Because we're going to need garrisons. It's going to suck, but we're just going to need garrisons. Let's do that. Update. There you go. Garrisons, just in case. And I want... How much... What do we have here? What do we have? We have no artillery, which is not good. Guns? We've got a few guns. We can throw on quite a few more guys here. Let's go 18 combat first. That'll be okay. I don't mind spending the arm XP for now, because we honestly need to. Support equipment's not bad either. Logistics would be nice. I would like recon, though. We don't have enough for that. How about recon, then? We do have enough for that. So that'll be good, because I do want to try to raid. So let's save. We're going to try the raid. If it doesn't go well, then that's... Obviously not going to go well for us, but that's okay. And, because we need we need money. We just need money. And we'll see what happens. As we're going to do, cooperation agenda. Efficiency can only be achieved with all apparatuses of the economy moving as one. Well. By connecting our farmers with the various food companies in our central planning committee, we'll be able to coordinate the entire agricultural industry. With all these moving parts now under our control, it's only logical that we try to organize it now. Given the rate at which our population is growing, there's been massive job growth with few workers to state this labor demand. We should rectify the shortage by moving wo workers from our crowded cities to the countryside temporarily, not only to boost agricultural productivity, but also provide employment to the many unemployed in the city. Form the Urban Planning Board. In order to maximize efficiency of the state, we should endeavor to centralize all economic and urban development offices into one large urban planning office. From here, we will be able to coordinate all manners of industrial, residential, and business developments within cities and towns. Additionally, we should bring in our private sector associates in order to accommodate their needs that, and the needs of the companies they represent. Should all go well, we should get a notice a great reduction in construction times and general increase urban development as a result. As you just saw, well, they, uh, they gave up and they didn't want to fight us, so... Not bad. Oh, they'll take that. 1.9, of course. And we're investing in new workers in our industrial expertise, which is awesome. I want to keep spending this way. Oh, more growth. We're not, I, I will not fight against growth. Growth is awesome. It's just awesome. More growth, please. More growth. We want the biggest, baddest economy we can possibly get. It's a lot of deficit, though, which is kind of unfortunate. Of course, we did increase our uh, division strength a little bit more. Not by much. Not by much. But getting recon and actually ballooning them up a little more is just... It's, you have to do it. It is my opinion. You have to do it. But not bad. Uh, what do I see up here? Agriculture is not, gonna, not looking too bad. Oh, yes, please. So now... Oh, we doubled the the poverty rate change, which is awesome. But the new Mangazeya. Mangazeya was one of the largest trading posts of Siberia hundreds of years ago. Its trading routes and abundance of furs and ivory made it one of the wealthiest and influential cities of the region. It was a Baghdad of Siberia. Sadly, over the course of centuries, a series of Tsars with little care or even knowledge of the Manga. Azeya destroyed the city with their own geopolitical concerns, but times have changed yet again that Tomskas needed the northern trade routes and access to the Arctic Sea that Mangazeya was provided. A new Mangazeya will be built, both as a bastion for the northern borders and as a trade hub from events the riches of the outside world will be available to us. What's not to love? Industry, yes please. Uh, as much as I love industry, we're going to keep going with some uh, weaponry as well. So one industry, one on um, the economy, industry stuff, and military stuff. That's generally what I like to do, so... Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Heavy construction. Okay. It just makes sense for us to beeline through all this stuff, right? 
Oh, that's looking really good. Workers are discontent. Who gives a crap? The Industrial Rationalization Council. The work we put into working with the private sector has really started to pay off. Private investment in the county has risen exponentially, and unemployment is dropping further every day. In order to preserve this prosperity, we'll need to ensure that future governments hold, hold to this policy of cooperation with the private sector as well. <clears throat> An organization will be created to help integrate public and private firms alike. While the blue-collar workers might complain about private industry amassing more power, we know that this policy can serve only to benefit the citizens of a great democracy. Nice. Uh, two more naval slots, which is okay, and get more state GDP. That's not bad. Yes. No one else wanted to raid us? Okay, it's fine. Whatever. Also, do we have any planes? Oh, we do have planes. Oh, look at that. I don't remember setting these up. I know I did not set these guys up. And transport planes go by. Bye. Early fighters, early casts. That could really help us out. Now, what's next? Mass specialization? Yeah, we should do that one. Tom stands as one of the great bastions of in in intellectualism and rationality to all of Russia. The experts and geniuses that reside within our nations are some of the most gifted and intelligent anywhere. More importantly than that, there exists a generation of young Russians growing up in Tom so could stand to learn from these valuable academics we have access to. By encouraging them to participate in and specialize in the academic fields, we could raise a new generation of experts and to bring Tomsk into the future. Not a bad idea. If I do say so myself. Hmm, that's not looking good. Oh, that's not bad though. Because spikes. Oh, that's not good. Time stack hikes. Oh, we need more political power for that. Span, span, span. At least for over here. Military stuff? No, not so much. We could do military austerity, but that would be pretty bad. Pretty bad for us. Um, anyone else want to raid us? Please? Please? Can we raid other people too? Please? Please? Keep working on the, the poverty. Not bad. Of course, we do. We are playing as the best of lads. We gotta make sure that we do okay here too. Oop, there goes those guys. Um, I might want to wait a little bit. We'll see. We don't really need to do it yet, so let's wait first. Mass yeah, specialization. More debt. Let's go research facilities next. The industrial aesthetic. Tomsk is an old city. Many of the buildings and landmarks of the city were built during the time of the Tsar, and while it's an honor to be able to house such precious historical architecture, especially considering how much of it was destroyed since the Russian Revolution, we must adapt for the modern era. By infusing, infusing the zeitgeist with the refined aesthetics and culture that glorifies the industrial worker, we'll hopefully be able to bring new energy and vitality to the workers as we work to improve industry in Tomsk. A new city, a landscape for the new Tomsk, and hopefully in time a new Russia. More stability? Yes, please. United Labor Movement? Not bad, too. Not bad. Guys, it's considerable, huh? Yeah, it's got to keep an eye on the economy. 92% is kind of high already. Uh, I don't want to go over debt, though. Oh, and reorganized production facilities networks? Not bad. Not bad at all. Past elections. Oh, crap. That's not good. Oh, there we go. Semers minus one. Humanists. Fast large three. Look at that. Now that's nice. Lower house. Okay. Not bad. And United Labor Movement? Might as well. While many workers seem to have this idea in mind that the Basque Lords are anti-union, we couldn't be further from the truth. We consider unions to play a valuable role in the economy, shielding the common man from their rapacity, rapaces, rapacity and greed of the businessmen and tycoons of Tomsk. To that end, we have endeavored to bring into law a variety of legal protections for unions and workers in Tomsk. The most important of these is our protection of sector-wide bargaining. Hopefully, by enshrining sector-wide bargaining into law, we will ensure that companies deal only in fair and efficient bargains with the public. Not a bad idea. How much political power do we get every day? One, oh, we actually get one. Exactly one. That's not terrible. It's better than some warlords, but worse than others. So, I think I read this one before as well. If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Do we have any, anything playing here? Nuke atmosphere. I figured as much. Oh, good. Infantry. Okay, nice. Get more soft attack. One of the most important things is to be able to murder all your enemies. Oh, look at the Siberian plan. We got plenty of guns. I don't want to lower this because we need that many guns. We really do. So let's not lower it. My labor movement. Nice. Cool. Production quotas. Oh. Okay. 
It's all for the growth, right? It's all for the growth. Don't worry about the debt. Don't worry about the debt. The four-year plan. With the help of our new private sector associates and allies, we can be around Bark and Potter first four year plans four-year plans for Tomsk. This ambition plan has several goals, including which includes boosting resource production, increasing factory productivity, and building more infrastructure. With all these measures will not only serve to increase Tom's general productivity, but also serve to strengthen Tom's military industrial strength. All that's left to decide is how resources should be divided. Okay, can I feed anyone else up here? Oh, it's very low scale stuff, huh? Can we actually manage to beat them? Hmm. I mean, their their divisions are not weak. They're literally not weak. Maybe along the way we'll find someone else to kill off. Cause we we, we need a raid. Like this is dangerously high. The plan of storms. If you want to about that, please go ahead. Where is my copy? Nice. Very cool. Um. I want to wait till we get closer. So. United Labor Movement. Very nice. Oh, uh, look at that stability. And all these are nice, but if you want to read that one, please go ahead, as well as this one. He heavy industry priority. Heavy industry is the backbone of every modern economy. Heavy industry can refer to a number of industries, from steel and chemical manufacturers to electrical and automotive production, with which all typify the modern industrial nation. We should invest in these industries so that we may form the basis of a far more robust and influential economy. Additionally, an investment into our heavy industry is also an investment into our future productivity. As the population economy grows, it needs as well as well. It needs will as well, and having the heavy industry to support them in the future will, will free them from building, uh, help free them from build up other parts of the economy. Ooh. Nice. Oh, free aviators. Oh, screw that. I like that one more. Oh, supply is so bad. Supply is so bad. Oh my goodness, it's so bad. 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 Oh, look at that. That is god-awful. Our finest bureaucrats. Workplace regulations and pollution controls may be standard or even required in other nations, but we simply cannot afford them here in Tomsk. On all sides, we face enemy warlord states bent on our destruction. We cannot afford to let our industry be held back for the sake of a few workers' comforts. Our bureaucrats will separate the wheat from the chaff and come up with a list of law and regulations to loosen or remove altogether so that we might unchain our industry and march into the future as an economic superpower in Russia. At least as best we can, so. Go ahead, this is... Man, I want their capital so badly. Please. Please let us just raise you. Please. Oh, dang it. Come on, man. That was not enough money. This is really bad here. Jalo, very cool. You know what's so bad? I'll do extra investments again. Okay, that makes me feel quite a bit better. Holy crap. Nice. Finest bureaucrats. Which we have no regulations now. How lovely. Because we're going to Who cares? Spiritual efficiency. With the government economy reorganized, it's about time we get to working in Tom's culture. The government has the power to shape everything about society, most importantly. It can shape how people think. We must shape people's thoughts in a way that encourages stability and favors progress. In order to achieve such a goal, we'll embark upon a large-scale propaganda campaign using posters, radion, or radios, cinema, and anything else we can influence having. Or hopefully with some time, we can give the people of Tom's mindset that benefits everybody. Hopefully. That is the goal. And, uh, we need more political power here, too. Uh, how are we doing? Are we still suffering from... Sp yeah, okay, just all go there. Libs retain power in Canada? Alright, well, whatever. Ah, fine, bureaucrats. Not bad. Keep building, building, building. Are we doing with the... Oh, we actually built one. Look at that. Oh, oh, look at that. Wow. Two out of four six grants political power factor gain of plus 8%. I love it. Sure, why not? We could use that one, can't we? What 
Let's see, an urbanized atmosphere. Construction speed. Ooh, rapidly improve. I like that. The history of industrialization abroad and <clears throat> in Russia will be vital to understand if we are to understand our modern society. Especially if we were to combat the crass explanations put forth by the fascists and communists. Our current Marxist understanding of industrialization and revolution, something we have inherited from the Bukharan era, may not be incorrect but rather incomplete. We should strive to deepen our understanding of the modern society and how it came to be by examining a variety of historical sources and theories. Of course, Marxism, nothing but a bunch of theories. I want to spend PP there, but uh. The harmonious wasteland, the life of the average townsperson or city dweller in Tomsk, is the same as across Russia and indeed the rest of the world. It consists of a long and, work and grueling day to the factory, farm, or office before returning home to one's family for the night, and eating and sleeping so that they can wake up the next day and do it again. Under the Basilar's new cultural plan, this has not changed. What has changed, though, is the ambience of Tomsk towns and cities. Posters promoting and praising the strong worth ethic of the central Siberian individual line up the streets. News updates on the radio applauded the opening of new factories and the laborers who will work in them occur after every song is played, but above all, the new cinema scent of Tomsk as a Bastelard's crowning cultural achievement. A wave of Bastelard realist style films have been released over the past months, depicting the people of central Siberia, no matter their walk of life, as hardworking, determined, and industrious. The great challenge is standing before us crumble before the face of everyone working, thinking, and learning together. One film titled The Harmonious Wasteland has even managed to gain some slight traction outside of Tomsk due to its thrilling story and powerful message. It details the story of how the Central Siberian Republic initially formed from the ashes of the USSR, and how the Republic could never have come together without soldiers, politicians, and workers coming together. Its messages, uh, its message of rejecting class conflict in favor of having classes, all classes, working together to further the goals of the Central Siberia strongly resonated with the film's viewers, and has helped instill exactly the sort of values that the best were hoping for. The people of Tomsk can now display great pride in their excellent work ethic, their powerful industry, and their inspiring history. We've come together as one. Uh, an urbanized atmosphere. The city will, by and large, become the center of Russian society as Russia becomes increasingly urbanized in the future. We experienced such a cultural shift decades ago during the reign of the Bukharin, as thousands moved into the cities to work in the factories as Russia stabilizes. The city again will become the basis of Russian society, and when it does, there will be a flowering of urban intellectual culture unlike anything seen before in Russia's past. However, such an urban renaissance can only care if we provide it to the conditions that exist. To that end, we must provide or build Tomsk into a world-class city, or this make it a rival of old Moscow. Cool, not bad. I am sucker for growth, man. I can go to Omsk. Hmm. Let's see. It's not a common culture. No matter who you are, where you live in Tomsk, we can all lay claim to a common history and struggle. We've all been shaped by the Siberian experiment and its effects, both good and bad. The common worker needs to understand that his leaders are just like him and are working towards the same goals he is. Furthermore, oh, whoops, my bad. Furthermore, furthermore, furthermore. <clears throat> A common worker should understand that under our leadership, Tomsk will not only survive, but it'll thrive. We're the shining city on a hill, and in time, our light will illuminate even the darkest corners of Russia. Is we in Black League, or these guys? Oh, good God. I don't know. Oh, my goodness. That's so much manpower. Um, it literally doesn't matter. Um, yeah, come over here. We'll give so, we'll some more time before we have to actually have to be over here, so. That's not good. Yeah, we definitely need some trucks. We need some trains, and we need trucks. Alright, let's go ahead and in. I hope this goes well for us. Good God, I hope it goes well for us. Because if it doesn't, well, you'll see some funky stuff not. Well, maybe you won't see some funky stuff. Huh. Put it like that. I do want to be able to raid and actually be successful, so... Oh, come on, man. You pay tribute. Do we need... Yeah, we're doing actually really well with a lot of the stuff. Academic base, research facilities, agriculture. Agriculture could use a little bit of love. Are they, oh, they're actually in war with each other. Oh, that's kind of nice. An industrialized system. A new industrialized system, though. All across comps, there seems to be a vague sense of contentment and cautious optimism. For the first time in decades, it feels as if, at least in our small portion of Russia, we've achieved some sense of normalcy or normality. 
The workers are working, the industry is humming along, and the new government and its agencies are working fine. It seems as if the quality of life is starting to increase for everyone. It feels like everything is going to be alright. It's been a long time since the Russians have been able to feel this way. If I were to get it improved, the more political power, very good. All the stuff that we do love. Growth, yes please. Where are we at now? 70%? I'm not worried about 70%. That's not bad. Not shabby. How fast is this going up? Almost eight a month. That's not bad. Not bad. Not bad overall. Still building this one, which would be good. Uh, we could definitely use more prisons, though. Hmm. Common culture. Oh, wait. Ah, the literacy campaign. While the literacy uh, competency of the citizens of Siberia is far from what one would consider great, the one exception to that rule has been Tomsk. Still, even in spite of the intellectual and cultural hub, literacy has remained primarily the realm of a select group of bureaucrats, scientists, writers, and other elites. President Harms in the Basilard Salon as a whole seeks to address redistress that discrepancy. The salon, with help and support from the government, has been involved in the transportation of both teachers and materials needed to expand the reading capabilities of the population. Classes are held for both young and old to participate in. President Carmes praised the actions of his fellow Bastelards, stating that the population needs the skills in order to keep our republic safe, stable, and prosperous. While the reading materials are varied from the famous novels of the Russian canon, and others are more experimental in their styles, President Carmes' novels in particular have made a great impact upon the youth of the nation, with many parents surprised at their children's newfound interest in literature. The literature expands the mind to never before seen places. Okay, so now we actually need this one. My bad. Has lower house majority. I should have realized that before. Lower house. Oh, no, no political part of this. Oh, that sucks. My bad, guys. My bad. I should have realized this a little bit earlier. Um. Well, we're wasting time here. So we had to kill them all off. I didn't realize we had to do this one earlier. They should have uh, popped this earlier. Popped this one up earlier, so. Yeah, I'll get lower house majority first. Yeah, lower house majority. Authority. Lower house support. Uh, we need 24. And... There we go. Now we should be okay, right? 40. Ah, well, it looks like we had to wait just a little bit longer. Let's see. What a plan. Oskolok. Korai. Well, looks like Kamen Rebels done really well, so I want to kill them off quickly. The Republican Army is entering its final preparations before war with Kamen Rebels. We must send General Krylov's bandits and liberate province from this pretend kingdom. Um, I think I've read this one before, but let's read it anyways. Field Marshal Shlapchnikov's day had been long, the night would be longer still, occupied as he was putting the finishing touch to Operation Oskolok, the plan to capture Kamen Rebels. The facts and matters of the operation were simple. Former General of the Central Siberian Republic, Nikolai Krylov, had seceded with several of the Republic's best infantry mechanized divisions. The rich industrial town of Kemerovo and its coal basin had no doubt up the separatists field several more regiments of well equipped troops. There are few good angles of attack through the woods between staging points Yurga and the enemy capital Kemerovo. Shapshnikov hoped it would not boil down to a war of attrition. The rumors from the south were troubling. Shapshnikov had served with Nikolai Krylov, know him well. The separatist leader had been a good officer. Now, word on the street was that the commander had gone mad, claimed to himself to be the heir of Rurk, the ancient king of Rus. Shlapshnikov had no idea the rumors were true, and no idea if his old friend was completely lost it after failing to defeat the anarchists in the east. All the marsh news is that for the Republic to live, Kemerov's industrial assets had to be retaken. Some of Shlapshnikov's junior staff expressed some mocking attitude towards the Mad King and his lackeys. The marshal had been quick to remind his officers not to underestimate any enemy. Crazy or not, General Krylov was a smart and charismatic leader. His subjects would fight to the bitter end to defend their new state. The Republican marshal hoped that the Operation Oskolok would not trigger a long and bitter bloodshed between Tomsk and his former province. We strike southeast. This one is was well, this one. The Siberian Black Army, the Republic now stands on the cusp of beginning Operation Teodora Ruka, an invasion of the Siberian Black Army held territories. The Asian anarchists had caused much of the trouble that had affected the CSR and the Stanford Army to end the insurrection once and for all. As we're going to get some more loot first. Some good old looty booty, thank you, thank you. Now I'm striking them because they're doing really well here first, and if they are doing really well over there, well, hopefully we can do really well on our side. And take and blitz and take and take and blitz and tots and blah, 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 blah. They're, they're, they're VPs. I don't mind them winning, I just want us to win more. Uh, how long was it going to take? Scam no, that's 23 days for scavenging for loot. Um, over here, please don't win that fast. Oh my god, you won already. Holy crap, what is wrong with these guys? 
Okay, I'm gonna do some funky stuff here. That's... So what? What? How are they so strong? Yeah, no, that's not gonna go very well for us now, is it? Yeah, I don't care. I mean, at this point, like... I might do some funky stuff, because this is BS. So, we'll see. Move in, dig in for now, do the best we possibly can, and don't screw up too hard. It's usually the goal, right? Are you actually losing there? How are we losing? Yeah, I, I'm. to be honest, I don't care about having you to use consequence for stuff like this. Because stuff like this, it, it pisses you off. Like, it doesn't make any sense how sometimes enemies are just so ridiculously strong. Are they really going to give up the capital? I mean... Okay. Oh, they're almost gone. Uh, where's the capital now? Oh, was that a... Hmm. Lobster war ends. Well, good for you guys, I guess. Big seam. Go in there, too, I guess. I was just was thinking that we need to get the, the, the capital. Hold on. How was Militia able to beat us up here? Excuse me? Not bad. We're slowly winning here. I'm winning here too, which is good, 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 good. We're losing there, which sucks, 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 sucks. How do they have this many divisions? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh my god, hurry the heck up. Their divisions are OP, man. I need you to move in quickly. Do not lose any more tiles here, please, for the love of god. Are you doing anything here too? You're barely doing anything. Oh, come on. Yeah, I'm gonna do some funky stuff because I don't like this. I do not like how this is set up at all. Overpower very much. Eight to fourteen divisions. We start with six. Now I wasn't making too many at the beginning, but still. No of Sabisk. In Hoi 4, in general, should a non-core province ever, 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 ever become a capital? Now it's not the dev's fault. But my god. Who why? Why? Paradox. Why would you design it like that? Go to Exim. Actually, you might just be able to. Uh, there goes Hitler. We'll see what happens next. We'll go until we die, but still. Not any closer yet. Occupied territories. Look, oh, time. Yeah, look at that. It's nice. Nice. It's not like I want to just go there. That's all I really care about. Bro, are you kidding me? Are these frosty boys? They are frosty boys. We got some frosty tips. Oh, and the Jim Civil War is firing. That's kind of dumb. I really don't like it like this. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I don't like overpowered enemies. I really don't. So, sorry, but not really. Why can't we pull out these divisions? Come on. Yeah, overpowered much? Overpowered. Camarovo needs a hard nerf. Hard, hard nerf. If anything, they want to leave, we'll go up this way, maybe? Here, keep them in place for now. I'm going to get the motorized in there first. There you go. Hold. Hold, ding-dongs. Actually, you guys get back here, too. Retreat. We don't need that towel. We need, if we can, if all we need is Nova Sibirsk. I'm fine with that. What? We lost a basin. Oh, uh, yeah, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just do some fucking stuff off screen because this is overpowered. 12 to 15 divisions. 
half a million ma Nope, this is overpowered. Well, everyone, that was a lot faster than I thought it would be. Um, I took Kemarovo, and I took... I didn't get Novus of Beers. All I took was took Kemarovo. I don't understand this. Why is over... Why is Crest... Not Crest Norask. Kemarovo so flippin' overpowered. It's not fair. And then again, life's not fair. But at the same time, I apologize for having basically used Cons commands to a degree. Actually, not that much. But... It's stupid. It's incredibly stupid how ridiculously strong his divisions are. And they can pop out up to 15 divisions? Are you kidding me? Bro. Bro, who designed that? That's not cool, man. Ugh, that is disgusting. Like, you know, 7, you know, 7, 8, 10. Even 12. Up to 12. You know, we, we can deal with up to 12. Anything past that, you got to really reassess how things are really divided here. But at this point, I don't, I, I've played so much Chino, I don't give a crap about having to use Cons commands for something stupid like this. Oh, and Hitler hasn't even died yet. I guess we got, that's how fast it was. Because we were able to move our uh, motorized still down here fast enough that they weren't able to do anything, but... Yeah, no. I think Kimmer still needs a nerf. They they still need a nerf. I, I always, 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 always hate fighting because they're always so flippant overpowered. They're so ridiculously strong all the time. We actually have a surplus. We don't have a lot of growth, but at least we have a surplus. Not bad. Um, but yeah, I hate them so much with such a burning passion. It's 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 like the '80s for me in Old World Blues. I hate that faction. I hate that nation with a burning passion. I hate Kemrovo. Kemrovo is god awful. I don't like fighting the WRRF as well, especially. But like, Kemrovo is just blatantly overpowered for no, literally no reason. But it's a dev thing. It's definitely a dev thing. Um, raid Siberian Black Army. Eh, we could try it. I don't know how successful it'll actually be. But we could try it. Black League, not Army, League. Because we got the League on the left, on the west, and with the Army in, the, in that direction, so. Oh, now we can propose a military plan, which is fine, whatever. But yeah, I mean, Kimmerovo, it's just, just a death thing. Let's make this group really overpowered for no, literally no reason. Okay. Uh, oh my goodness, we need more power. Why do we have no power? Modify local resource factors. What the heck? Produce 24. Local resources factor. Well, we do need to core more stuff, so let's, let's keep corn for now. And promote this military program next. Are we ready to raid? Is the game going to cheat against us? Are they just going to spawn hundreds, literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of men? I mean, that's ridiculous. They get 122,000. 103,000. Two men, 154,000. Camera will get 700,000. They didn't even core Novus Obirsk. And they got 700,000 men. How the heck did... Why did... The, why does the AI... Why does the devs let them cheat that hard? I do not understand. I just do not. Has anyone ever actually had a raid that long? That seems like a very long time for a raid. Ah, the Jews. Well, we're doing okay so far. I actually found someone to beat up. Twelve combo with. I mean, those guys are eighteen combo with ish. South Africa more, very good. Prudnikov. Not bad. No one cares about South Africa. You best not start losing, son. Good. Come on. Come on. Before they get in there. Oh, what do we have over here? Okay, that's good. Nice. Now that makes me feel pretty good. Equipment. Rapid. We Oh, we have more poverty base rate change. Oh, that's not good. That's actually really bad. Can we please stop lagging so much, please? No? Okay. Holy crap, why is it so bad? Oh my god. Oh, it's Muscovine. That makes sense. No one gives a crap about Muscovine or South Africa. Food for the hungry. Very good. Nice. What's over here? Not bad. But if the devs want... Certain warlords to cheat, then so be it. Nothing I can do except cheat on my own. Oh, look at this. Severe expansion. Oh, that's nice. Military expansion. Army drills. Uh, that's not bad. Prepare for war. Research projects. Ooh, build up the arm factory. 65%. That could be really strong. We want to wait till the end of this part of the campaign. 65% of a monthly total income. Which will get these guys, these guys, and these guys all under us. Not bad. Purge of traitors. Integrate across the north into a political system. Oh, we could use the thermal electric plant immediately, actually. 
Ah. Let's do this one. Develop Gusnorak Industries. Bird to Traders. Yeah, I could do it eventually anyways too, that's fine. Do we get more loot though? And external investments as well. 30% is not much, but... Not bad. Yeah, just... I love fighting overpowered enemies. Makes me feel so, so good. Give him more encryption. Give him more decryption. Give him a wild amount of extra attack. And it'll be alright. There you go. We still need more energy, though. But, at the meantime... He's going to make more stuff. Even helicopters. Fighters would be nice, though. Tanks. You can kind of go in the bottom. Tanks are kind of useless, though, honestly. You know what? I, don't, I might even use tanks in this campaign. We'll just use a lot of air soul companies. That'd probably be better. So we need some attack helicopters, too. Those are very strong. There goes West Indies. Goodbye, West Indies. Real negative growth? Well, there's not much I can do while recording stuff, so... Camera level sucks. And don't you ever dare ever forget it. Camera level sucks, fat honkers. Fat honkers. Um, you don't have to pair these up. We'll see what happens if we really do that in the future. Mm, industry, please. 63, of course. It's almost 64. Get more output. Yes, please. Uh, what else do we have here? We just raided, so we can't. We gotta wait for that one. That's not bad. Grew up in Kimmerova coal mines? Yeah. Put work in the coal mines. Literally put him in the coal mines. That piece of garbage needs to die. Prisons in Kimmerova. Oh, this is where Rurik is going to stay. Him and his cheatiness are going to have to die. Looking better already. Not bad, not bad. Ah, slightly some growth. And this has dropped quite a bit. You know what? Hmm. Separated us from during the collapse of the CSR, we're now free to reunite with their lost territories in Erosia. A diplomatic offer will be the primary approach, and the military intervention being reserved as the last resort. Uh, let's come back over here just in case. Trial of the Krasnar clique. The trials are right in front of a limited crowd. At the North Sibirsk deal, uh, uh, North Sibirsk and Alta Federation were seen in Tomsk as the great betrayers of the CSR, the mutineers of Crest Norsk, were the Republic's undertakers. To avoid, being, avoid heckling crowds, the capitals, police held as close watch on the spectators as their trays and trials were underway. All the ravens and accomplices defended their actions by declaring the central government had lost the people's support. After being routed by anarchist rebels, the thought of regrouping for another attempt to subdue this desperate population had broken the soldiers' morale. Their act of rebellion against General Krylov had meant to save Crest Norsk and the eastern territories from further bloodshed. Oh, Totally true, totally true. Unfortunately for the mutineers, under such transmissions and letters that predated the mutiny had been saved by the fleeing CSR soldiers and brought back to Tomsk. There, Andrei's duplicity had revealed itself. The coup itself had been long planned and organized from the top down. Ambitious military officers had lied to their men about Krylov's intentions once Crest Norsk had been captured as Junta had ruled the fallen province, depriving the people of their freedoms for this treason against the Republic and her people. The judges sentenced the mutiny's leaders to long prison sentences. Never again would armed men impose their dictates upon the population. An ignoble fate for ignoble men. Operation Vosnesenzie. A central government had come around to ask for military plans to deal with the rogue Orosian territory. Shapshnikov had hoped things would never come to this. He had also prepared for such a set of invasion plans named Operation Vosnesenzie. The Marshal of the Republic knew the civilian government had a little appetite for violence against the remote secessionists. Who knew how things would turn out in this era of strife and conflict? The military side of things was quite simple. Beyond the problem posed by high fi altitude flying or fighting, Russia's population was and had always been extremely low, even with the small influx of displaced old believers from Western Russia. The tiny nation would struggle to find or fuel fueled more than a few regiments of regular infantry. Beyond discussion and staging points for the invasion of scheduled aim to acclimatize acclimatize troops to mountain air and the military, the plan mostly discussed cultural issues tied to the occupation and how to best avoid making the locals feel as though their way of life is threatened. It reached along before semi-autonomous and from the central Siberian government. Local Bukharinists, followers of a Turkic faith, had comprised or complained to the government about the arrival of thousands of old believer refugees from the West. The ever marginalized Christian group had apparently decided on settling in a remote region for their own safety. Oh look at that. The local tensions had been an issue but not a critical one. The province had become separated from Tomsk in the collapse of the Republic. And some neutrality and isolation in the following years. Zavoloko, president of the Italian nation, was not a bad man. 
If guarantees were made that his people would be left free to worship however they choose, Shapshnikov knew that the violence could be avoided. Diplomacy. Oh my gosh, we lost so much support. Okay, so from here or not, we're going to focus on authority. We're just going to focus on this as much as we possibly can. We need more political power. My goodness. One and a half is not enough every single day. We have more production. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh wow. There you go. But loot first. We gotta keep going with loot, and then we're, then look at that man part. That's ridiculous. Um, we're gonna probably get authority. What's the difference between authority and popularity? Eh, the approval is pretty good, but everything else is really bad. Um, upper house is okay. Lower house is okay. I do want to maximize authority and popularity though. That'd be nice. But yeah, I don't like it when that. I just don't like it when that game cheats. It just it, when it cheats, it cheats so badly. Uh, Shokola. Commanders of the Re Republic already launched Operation Shokola, the final destruction of the People's Revolutionary Council, more honorable than Yagoda's Eastern Soviet remnants. Vasilevsky's uh, Red Army units must still be defeated. The Republic is recaptured of all Central Siberia. Reintegration of Russia. Today, cheering citizens have greeted the rival Russia's representatives in the capital. The envoys were a pair, an old believer, priest, and a Bukharinist elder. Both were driven to the presidential palace, where a great ceremony was to be held for the peaceful reunion of the Republic with its wayward province. And Gordon Altayask, little been seemingly changed. President Zavoloko had resigned, letting a new provincial governor be appointed by Tomsk. Unless a good candidate has been prepared, a suggestion of choosing a man from each religious community had been put forward. In the hills and among the mountains of Altai, the two communities continued to live and continued to pray. Slowly, the old resident grew accustomed to their new neighbors. The process would continue to ask. Uh, as Russia took back its place within the new republic. The only difference was that hopefully war would not visit the town and province in the foreseeable future in the new republic. Zavoloko would hopefully find a protector and a friend that would let the Bukharans and old believers finally live in peace. Welcome home, citizens. Nice. This is all of the principality. The loss of Kemerovo and the surroundings had been one of the most final nails in the coffin for the central Siberian Republic. When the general Krylov had gone mad and emerged as a self-styled King Rook II, which I will butcher and murder every single time I can ever play against him, the industrial assets of Kemerovo region as well as its vast coal mines had slipped from Tom's grasp. Recapturing the region with a much diminished Republican army would have been the height of the folly. Some of the CSR's best troops had gone east with Krylov, and those men had not left for Krasnoyarsk soon formed the core of Krylov's new royal army. Now the region has been liberated. Even as the Republic soldiers enter the streets of the enemy capital, our bureaucrats are already working working to implement a Shlapshnikov's post-war ideas. Every captured industrial complex is seen as damage assessed and its potential outputs added to the tally. All this information will be put to good use for the future economic planning. Equally important in the tallying are captured soldiers and surrounding garrisons. It's hoped that many of the men are not very ideological and thus could be reintegrated into our army. These elements of questionable loyalty to be placed in front of frontline duty allow them to keep their jobs while expanding their military capabilities. All this will take time. Trust for local officials and military commanders who join in Krylov's mutiny will uh, be a complicated affair and who expose deep wounds left by the fall of the Central Siberian Republic with malice towards none. We must set to work at tying back together the fate of Kemerov's residence to the fate of a great republic. Let's get to work. Nice. Um, like I said, I do want some of that stuff by the same time. And we could be focusing on the legacy of the Siberian Republic, but we've hit that pretty hard already. I want more authority and popularity. Fate of the Mad King. I want to kill him. Pro Basilards, good size rule. Oh, this is not looking good for us at all. Oh, it's so bad. We integrated all these pieces way too quickly. After a triumph of the so called Principality of Kemerovo, our men who captured the Mad King Rook II, formerly General Krylov of the Central Siberian Republic, the poor unfortunate, who is not poor or unfortunate, has returned to the Tomsk as not as a conquering hero, but as a prisoner of war, is fate uncertain. Oh, it's certain. For many in the capital, Krylov deserves the fate of every captured separatist. After Trout establishes a degree of guilt, Krylov serve, shall serve a long sentence of prison where the remnants of his fractured psyche are able to think about the blood he shed and hunger for power. Others, however, hold a more nuanced perspective on the disgraced general. Krylov had long battled depression after the annihilation of the Soviet Union and the death of so many of its people. So he needs to fight for the Central Siberian Republic, his defeat by the anarchists and treachery that his officers in Krasnorok have sent Krylov's mental self into final freefall. The fact of pleading for clemency, led by Krylov's former friend, Marshal Shapshnikov, have published an open letter requesting Krylov be placed in a mental institution there. The former Mad King might hopefully see his mental health improve and some of his megalomania removed. The debates about this issue have been fierce. Many who express sympathy for Krylov's plight so decry the general's failures and argue that it's unknown that the general's truly mad or invented his rook persona to justify a secession. People desire to know which way the president's office leans on the issue. Mercy's not weakness, place him in mental hospital, kill him off. Kill him off. I'd murder him. He's a flippin' cheater. Are you kidding me? No. He does not deserve peace or anything like that. If the game wants to cheat with him, then they're gonna die. You're gonna die straight up. Don't ever meet me in real life, because I will 
you, you don't exist. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Anyways, <laughs> I get way into this. Motorized. Yeah, we we have to have that. Uh, I'm thinking about getting anti air as well. At this point, um, we're gonna go 27 combat with because I've I've heard that's pretty good. We go 21st, 21 for now, and we're gonna add an or maybe 26. Oh no, maybe we should. Oh, I wasted on some army XP, didn't I? 27. I think 27 is pretty decent. We'll keep expanding how much soft stack we get. That's pretty good for defense as well. So, put up the air bases. Um, I don't want to do again. Get, get those other parts done. Trial sessionist might as well. And was this one as well. So then we're completely done with this part. And we have to do both of these, which will take some time, which is fine. Yeah, but 27 combat is very strong. It requires a lot of supplies, but it's it's. It should be pretty darn decent, not gonna lie. It should be pretty darn decent. Government prevails. Good job, government. And do want to... Because we do need to save some army XP for, uh... You know... Other things. Such as... Land auction. Gonna be super important. Nothing else there, yeah, huh? It's fine. Yeah, why are the December so popular? We're gonna increase our authority and increase our popularity. Screw everyone else. Can I, can I, can I raid? I want to raid. Or loot. We have one loot. Oh, for the aviators. Uh, huh. Okay. We could try it. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe. But, 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 but maybe. Flighties, not bad. Cool. Yeah, we're already looking really good here. I mean, just there's, there's only so much political power that we, we can spend. Uh, pre readers. Cool. And then democracy coup. Cool. Actually, if anything, that ships out just a little bit more. I'm gonna have all, all, all this political power to spend, but I mean, we lost way too many seats last time. Come on. Let's go. And they say what? Should be paid, as they should. The end of the Federates. The man who began the downfall of CSR, and the man who put it in... Uh, and the man who put it in its final nails, the trial of Vasily Shukshkin, Alexander Pokrushkin, and all their associates of the Federation of Novosibirsk and Altaisal packed courtrooms. The Federates have been the most powerful breakaway faction of the Republic, and now their defeat have brought back to the fore the pain of the secession all those years ago. Both of the main defendants appeared unrepentant before the court. Vasily Shukshkin decried the difficult condition in Altai region, where peasants were overworked to feed the whole of the Central Siberian Republic, had not been the right to march for the rights. When accused of leading violence against the central government, Shukshkin retorted that the Republican army had been sent to crush or protest violently, forcing the citizens to arm themselves. Likewise, Pokrushkin was unmoved by the prosecution's accusations. Him a traitor? As a military officer, he had always been known to his duty to the common man. When the stalemate war against the Gurdjieff Red Army remnants had pushed the city of Sar into the famine, had the people not been right to call for peace? Had the desperate pleas deserved to be drowned under the crackle of gunfire? Their arguments failed to sway either the crowd or the judge, as military officers and as recognized original politicians. The accused failed to restore calm and order in the jurisdiction. Instead, they invited the specter of civil war and plunged the central Siberia into chaos, unrepentant. The so called Federates proceeded. To build a corrupt bureaucratic regime. No doubt that if these fetters had their way, Russian democracy would have been buried, its corpse used to fertilize corrupt private interests. For this, the court condemns accused and will seek the sentence of life in prison, where the accused will have their time to reflect on the crimes. Justice prevails. And if you wonder about it, welcome to the Dolina Nochi, please go right ahead. Not bad. Hey, more divisions, good. Good. Foundations, alright. And I want to get at least started with one of these two, so. Severe Black Army, and they'll take these guys out. And this is going to be a pain in the butt to take out. I'm going to tell you right on out. You know what? This one says... Totaling 0.66. If we do this early enough, we can probably do it again, too. 0.66. Ah, eh, do it anyways, why not? Get more money this way. Pay debt. And invest. When the order came to march on the secession's governor's Novosibirsk, Anatoly Petrov had grimly understood its need. 
The actions of those in command of the city fatally weakened the Republic during Yagoda's invasion. The continued separation prevented the unification of the most populous and industrialized region of central Siberia with a central government in Tomsk. Reclamation was essential. Nova Siberia is a good experienced military, led by some of the finest officers east of the Urals, and they furthermore leveraged the massive refugee population within the borders, conscripting them into the militia formations. Militia formations which were well equipped, owing to the many industrial ceilings. As though it had been a bloodbath, and as Anatolia's unit had managed to sweep through the city, he had lost count of the broken and mangled bodies he had seen. Leading a small patrol through one of these industrial zones after the surrender, Anatoly could not but help but reflect on everything his father had argued for years, on the importance of the Bastards gave, gave to industrial expansion and production. He had once seen merit in those ideas, and now, now, no, and all he could see now and then was death. All he could see now was that cold rationale of productive calculus as applied to bullets, guns, cannons, and how many death per unit could be achieved. They cared nothing for the ages of those cut into two by machine gun fire, the cries of a fractional group of mothers who lost their children to a fractional production quote of artillery shells. He wanted no part of such beliefs. He didn't know how he would tell his father that. It was war itself akin to an assembly line? Pretty much. Um, army drills. Arm XP, you know what, we're so close. Let's grab this one. I don't know if we can redo these ones, so that's why I'm kind of apprehensive about doing them, so we'll see. Oh, actually a little bit more. So, oh, that's not bad. Let's gonna keep that in reserve. Just keep spending. Wow, we spent a we spent about equal amount on these policy sides. That's not bad. And how are we doing over here? Minus point zero five, not bad. Not bad. So Operation Teodoraya Ruka. Shops and a cop nursed a couple of bad copies as aides ran back and forth from the mil war ministry. Any moment now, President Daniel Karams was expected to call and give Operation TR's official approval. Teodaya Ruka. Most of the recycled plans from the initial attempt made by the CSR to crush the anarchist uprising all those years ago had not been a bad plan. A rapid push to cut in half the territory occupied the anarchist rebels and lay siege to the capital of Konsk where the Siberian Black Army's main HQ could be found. Krylov's initial push had come close to doing the job. Andres Betrayal had ensured there would be no follow-up offensives and the Black Army's success in routing Krylov's heavy guns on the outskirts of Kransk. The final death of the Central Siberian Republic was determined. The anarchists had fought hard and they had fought well, but this time they would not face an exhausted Republican army. Information and sources in the SBA were hard to come by. The Republic's intelligence agency still had not determined how exactly the initial revolt had been sparked, nor had figured out who amongst the SBA leaders, Stepanov and Siudal, really spoke for any army and his men. Shlapshnikov hoped that in battle the truth would become clear and the Republic would finally understand its fellow enough to destroy it. A phone call. Even before answering the Marshall News time, the march east was to wash the sins of the past, and hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we will attempt to reunite more of Siberia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.